Well, hello everyone, Tex88 here, and welcome to another retro gaming review. And for this review, I'm looking at a game called Fire and Forget, brought out by French software company Titu, or Titus, or Titus. A uh, little bit of a dispute over how you pronounce the name, um, especially given that it's a, given that it's a French publisher and their their vowel sounds are a bit different to ours here in in English. So the story, conflicts and wars threaten to destroy the world. Uni unity must be restored in order to avoid a nuclear holocaust. The government has selected you to be the pilot of Thundermaster, the ultimate weapon. Thundermaster, a four-wheel drive vehicle equipped with a triple turbo engine, will allow you to cross enemy territories and fight to destroy mines, bunkers and helicopters. This could very well be your last mission. If you refuse, there will be no hope left. More like, if you refuse, there'll be no game. Oh dear. The future is in your hands. Fire and forget. Never look back. You won't have time. You are our last chance. Well, the game seems to be so exciting already that you don't even get a proper introduction. Just straight into choose your level, whatever that's all about. Oh god. Q, A, Z, X, and cap shift are the keys, are they? Oh dear. Well, it moves at, it moves at a nice speed. Jesus. Well, it certainly moves at a rate, so uh, after the problems I had with Outrun, I certainly can't complain about its speed. So those pyramid-shaped things in the road um, allow you to top up that fuel gauge at the top of the screen. Problem is with a bit end of war. Um, okay. Oh, bloody, I hit a mine. Uh, something. Okay. <laughs> what? I didn't hit anything. Oh, bloody hell. Can't I just type it? It's. It, I'm on a computer, I just want to be able to type this. Oh, I admit. Oh, I only had to beat a score of nothing to get on the high score table. That's so exciting. Let's try starting from level two. Is that level difficult? Ooh, a bit of a Whoa, bloody hell. What? I didn't even touch that. Seriously, I can't even see what's hitting me, assuming anything even is. Goodness me. Oh, God. You are the number two. I hope that's not that number two. I'll stop and level one again, but I get the feeling that might be. Oh. oh, I see things are shooting at me. The problem is, you can only shoot in the direction of facing, it's not even possible to actually hit him. seem to be these disc shaped things that sometimes appear on the left hand side of the shoot and shooting at me. Yeah, they are. I just saw the bullets there. End of war. Well, that, if it lasted that short a time, I can hardly call that a war. Could that, be a, could that have been a mistranslated? Uh, oh, I mean, I got shot. Oh, give me a chance! 
that was ridiculous. It gave you no invulnerability. So I actually got shot before I had a chance to do anything in the next life. Oh my god. I'm Seriously, what's with all these cruddy driving games? I mean, it may be a lot faster and smoother than Outrun, but it's still a, it's still a not great, not a good game. It's a pretty nice looking car, but I find it very hard to, I find it very hard to believe that this is the most sophisticated car on the planet that it can be blown up so easily. And it's, it's not impossible to hit anything because of because you can literally only fire in the direction the car's facing. So, if you do hit anything, it's by the nearest of luck. Well, I am impressed with those. I'm impressed with, uh, with how smoothly the 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 Oh, piss off. Uh, oh, you can sod right. See, look. It's virtually impossible to hit anything. They, they literally have to be right in front of your vehicle. I think I'm going to give this one more go. Then I'll wind up this review. It's clearly obvious that this has got precious little to offer. Right, three is the highest. Oh, great. So those things fire nigh on impossible to avoid bullets. And of course, because of everything's in monochrome. Oh, see again. I had no chance of avoiding that because he'd already started firing at me before by the time I respawned. I mean, you're hardly in danger of running out of fuel when there are so many of those pyramids on the road. Oh, God. It sounds really good. This is a 48k spec. Right, that'll do me. That game is about as engaging as going to the toilet. Basically, in fact, going to the, in fact going to the toilet more in, in entertaining than this. So that's fire and forget for the ZX Spectrum, and it's a lame dr driving shoot 'em up. So graphics. That's actually the best bit about the game. I mean. The, that that's a, a nicely drawn car, although I, it doesn't really look all that special, considering it's supposedly the the ultimate weapon. Really, the ultimate weapon, and it can only fire a gun in one direction. Yeah, that's really an ultimate weapon. I mean, you don't even get targeting sights um, uh, that, that are even remotely helpful. In, just got to shoot and hope you hit things. I'm not impressed with that at all. Sound, that's, I mean, one other thing I like about the, the visual appearance is the, 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 the road, the road undulates um, really smoothly and it's, uh, and it's, and the action's fast and smooth and, um, And uh, every, everything uh, moves at a really good good speed, so I can't fault that. I mean, it, it, it and and it's the the uh, and the luckily the fuel pods are very distinctive in shape, so it's. It's not like it's really easy to mistake them for other for mines or those disc-shaped enemies that can seem to shoot you.
and the and the things coming into the you know coming into the foreground from the horizon seem to seem to seem to grow in size smoothly so there are plenty of frames of animation to cater for that without everything going really blocky sound very good for a 48k spectrum those are nice explosion and firing sound effects and the engine noise isn't too bad either in fact it's quite tidy and it's not one of those flatulating noises that you sometimes get on the on the platform so can't can't really fault the sound either the gameplay on the other hand yeah it's it's nigh on impossible to hit things at the best of times unless you're pointing directly straight into the into the screen and a, and a roughly central you're lucky if you hit anything at all I mean, if your if your car is facing, say, over to the left, then that's where your fire will go. Your gun is fixed to firing just directly in front of you, and that is it. And without a proper gun sight or a crosshair or anything like that, it's it's a wonder if you actually manage to hit anything at all. And there's also the problem that you get no invulnerability when you lose a life and respawn. Not even for the briefest uh, se um, second or two. So that basically means that if, if something's already heading towards you, then the likelihood is it's going to hit you and cost you another life before you've had a chance to do anything. That is really bad. But the biggest problem is there's just not enough to do. All you're really doing is driving along and shooting at things, and it's, and it's both irritating and dull in equal measures. So it looks and sounds great, but the gameplay is is really not up to snuff. So I'm going to... Well, in the words of, uh, of Sir Alan Sugar, you're fired, hence the fire in the title, and... From my point of view, I'd like to forget that this game was ever made. So I'm going to give the Fire and Forget for the Spectrum 4 out of 10. Graphics and sound are more than commendable, for, especially for the Spectrum. And especially the, the sound and how smooth everything runs. But apart from that, there's not really anything that would make you want to come back to this game anytime soon. Hope you enjoyed that review. Texie88. Out.